Hello, Reward Commissions. This is Ali Nase, and this Friday's question is on the topic of perforation repairs. How can we repair basic perforations? Okay, let's face the facts. Perforations are very unpleasant. What we can do about perforations is that when they do occur, we have to act quickly and aseptically, and we need to use biocompatible materials that seal the perforation area as well as possible. Now, what we know is that perforations fail primarily due to contamination of the perforated surface with microbes. Therefore, Sealing immediately while still making sure that you have good isolation and a clean field is paramount to success. Once the perforation site is disinfected, isolated, and dried, seal the area with a biocompatible material like the BC Putty Fast Set. Keep in mind uh, that the goal is a clean, disinfected dentinal ring at the site of the repair prior to the repair procedure. Now, this is critical to success. Let's look at a clinical case to demonstrate the specific concept. This patient was referred to me for endodontic therapy in necrotic tooth number 18 with a symptomatic apical periodontitis. Endodontic therapy was completed in a single visit. A ribbon-shaped distal root was noted at the time of obturation. Following endodontic therapy, the patient was referred back to his general dentist for restoration with a core buildup and a crown. The patient returned eight months later for a follow-up with a chief complaint of discomfort and pain in the gingival area on the buccal aspect of the tooth. Now, upon examination, the apical lesions had healed, but a furcal lesion had now developed. A short post in proximity of this area was observed that was deviating from the long axis of the root. Another angle shows the incorrect alignment and the furcal lesion. A cervical post perforation through the furcal concavity in the mesial aspect of the distal root was then diagnosed as the cause. Options of extraction versus surgical or non-surgical repair were discussed with the patient. Now, luckily the lesion was not showing recession and a deep probing into the furcal area was not noted. As a result, the patient elected to proceed with the recommended treatment of non-surgical repair of this uh, uh, perforation. Now, perforation repair in such cases constitutes removal of the post through the crown and then decontamination of the uh, perforation site and sealing of the area with a bioceramic uh, cement such as the RRM Putty Fast Set. A special technique by Rebaldendo for such repairs was used. In this technique, the perforation area is decontaminated, hemorrhage is controlled, and a small amount of the BC RRM Putty Fast Set is placed into the perforation site against the biological surface beyond the perforation. Now, it's important to use a very biocompatible for this purpose because of the proximity of these live cells and the importance of keeping it as biocompatible as possible so that you don't induce any additional inflammation. And in fact, for specific properties of this uh, putty material is what makes it ideal for the specific purpose. First, it's biocompatibility, and uh, then also it's antimicrobial properties due to its high pH, and then the, the sealing ability because of the fact that it's dimensionally stable and it ever so slightly can expand. And last but not least, it's clinical handling properties that are a key feature of why it's so easy to use clinically for this particular purpose. The perforation technique using this material involves removing a small amount of the putty material from the syringe, and, and the amount should be equal in size to the size of the perforation, and that material should be collected from this in as aseptic of a manner as possible, which means do not try to touch with dirty gloves and go straight from the syringe into the perforation site if possible, or straight from the syringe into a spatula and then gather enough material to put into the perforation side. Otherwise, if you have to manipulate it to shape it into a cone or into any si shape that you want, please make sure you change your gloves and you're using clean gloves and that haven't been uh, touched uh, with the patient's face and there's no smear of bacteria on the surface of the glove. Now, then gently place the material without any need for heavy condensation because the material is hydrophilic, adapts to the area, and uh, will bond on its own. It doesn't require really any condensation. 
much like composites, it just requires placement. Now, since the setting time of the putty is about 20 minutes, you can either wait or better yet, place a layer of a bioactive glass like the endosequence liner or a glass ionomer material over the putty and then light cure it. This allows you to proceed with the endodontic treatment and complete the case during the same visit uh, as this uh, cured layer over the putty protects the underlying putty material from washout during the irrigation and instrumentation phase of your treatment. Now, this is in contrast with the first generation bioceramic materials like MTA, where you had to use a moist cotton pellet over the material and let the, let the material set over, uh, over time, which meant that you had to send the patient back home and have them return for a subsequent visit. Uh, this can now be done in a single visit, which is really an advantageous uh, process. Anyway, following repair, you can then etch the liner uh, and then bond your core material to it with the regular sandwich technique that has been described in the literature. Alternatively, you can place a reinforced uh, glass cyanomer material over the BC putty and fill the entire cavity in one shot if, uh, if it's all you're doing is a perforation repair. There, because there is a synergy between the BC putty and glass cyanomer, and this is uh, what was basically done in this particular case. This is the immediate post-operative radiograph after removal of the post through the crown and repairing it with the BC putty. And this is the eight months follow-up showing healing of the furcal lesion and resolution of the patient's symptoms. Now, no probing is present at this time and healing continues to take place as the bone is filling in. Future radiographs will be obtained and will be shared with you guys. Now, I will share other cases in the future using this easy technique of perforation repairs in a variety of situations. Until then, this is Ali Nesse and I hope you found this tutorial helpful. 